Well, good evening on this Thursday night, April 15th. My name is Kelly Lipensky, and I'm the director of Congregational Life here at First Presbyterian Church of Morristown. And thank you for showing up and proving that the body of Christ indeed is not a building or four walls, even though we love our facilities here. The body of Christ, it's the people of God. That's you, that's me, that's all of our listeners and viewers tonight. Thank you so much for gathering to be the body of Christ because we are stronger when we join together to study God's word and to pray for God's will and purposes to be done in our lives, our community, and the world. Tonight is a time of guided prayer for Jesus' harvest prayer, and on the second Thursday of each month, we offer this guided prayer time using the harvest prayer of Jesus. Well, what is that in case you haven't watched before? In Luke chapter 10, verse 2, Jesus commands us to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into a harvest that is ripe and ready. In other words, we're praying that God would make us a congregation of disciples who make disciples of all ages. So this is a prayer for discipleship, that we might follow Christ more faithfully and authentically, and that we might invite people to do the same. That, in fact, we might be a church that embodies those fruits of the Spirit and that we can truly make disciples of all ages. A few announcements before we begin tonight. I and Joey, my fiancé, just want to thank all of you who attended our drive-by wedding shower last Sunday the 11th. We were and still are overwhelmed by your love generosity, patience waiting in that line that snaked around our parking lot, and we love the words of wisdom that you shared with each one of us as you drove by. We are on cloud nine still, just receiving such love and support and laughter and humor with each, with each one of you. So thank you so much for taking the time to celebrate our marriage coming up in just over a month. Also, we are in serious need of Sunday volunteers to help with check-in. As we continue to open up the church more and more, we really need help with two Sunday services, since we now have our 8.30 traditional service and our 11 a.m. contemporary service. Helping with check-in on a Sunday morning is about a 45-minute commitment, not long at all, and we'd really appreciate your help, whether it's one Sunday a month or two. Whatever you have availability for, please consider volunteering for either our 8.30 a.m. service or our 11 a.m. service. One way of the week is join hands, and we'd really appreciate your help. This is a great opportunity to serve your church, greet people warmly, welcome them back to FPC, and celebrate just the joy that it is, the privilege that it is, being able to gather safely together again within our buildings. We invite all adults and teens to take advantage of this opportunity to serve your church, and teens can, in fact, receive uh, service credit. So we welcome all ages to participate in this. We even had uh, a, young, a young man, Jacob, who we're so grateful for, Jacob Allen, um, who uh, really, really rocked at checking people in. And he's in elementary school. So if he can do it, anyone can do it. He really did a great job this past week. Also, please tune in for both our Sunday services or attend one of them in person this Sunday, April 18th. Beth Douglas, our seminary intern from Princeton Seminary, will be preaching her last sermon in person on Psalm 25. So please plan on attending either the 8.30 or the 11 to support Beth, our wonderful preacher. Also, one more note about checking in or being a volunteer for check-in, excuse me is you can find information about that and sign up, I forgot to mention, at the bottom of tonight's worship guide. So please look for the notes at the end of your worship guide. You can just click on the link there and sign up for an available day and time. Thank you so much for considering this opportunity. Our way of the week is ask for help. Part of being a real and authentic member of the church is to acknowledge your weaknesses and be willing to ask for God's help and the support of others. None of us can go it alone. Vulnerability is a sign of strength and it's a gift to others. One of my favorite verses in scripture really supports this way of the week and that's 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Paul writes, 
Each time the Lord said, my grace is all you need because my power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Indeed, isn't that what tonight is about? Praying that for our human brokenness, so God, the indwelling power of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can transform us from the inside out as individuals and as the body of Christ, so we might witness to the gospel more faithfully and authentically wherever we may be in the world. Some ideas for action for this way of the week are think about where you might need help right now. Give that to God tonight. And also, don't forget, share your weaknesses or a moment where Christ transformed you with someone else. The power of testimony cannot be underestimated. Friends, ask for help this week. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Make your people one Abide with us Refine in us The wonders of your love Sing that with us Come Lord Jesus Beth Douglas and I lead you through a time of guided prayer of the harvest prayer of Jesus. I just want to remind you that you can hit pause in between these five guided moments of prayer in case you need more time. We welcome you to do that, invite you to just pause and be in the presence of God more tonight. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. 
So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray that we will follow Jesus faithfully as his disciples. Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. As soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. We pray for more workers for the harvest. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. We pray to find persons of peace. May the Spirit of God guide us to those whose hearts are open. May we find those children, youth, young adults, and adults of every age who long to know the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. Whenever you enter someone's home, first say, may God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. We pray for the multiplication of disciples. We pray that God would produce a great harvest of disciples within our congregation and the congregations of Morristown and from within this community and region. Still other seeds fell in fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Let us pray against those forces and powers that oppose the making of disciples. We wage a spiritual battle, but we pray to be clothed in the armor of God. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And now receive this sending blessing. May the God who calls each and every one of us by name encourage and equip you as you join in his healing and redemptive work in our world. Peace of Christ be with you.